Muslims are only those who carry the weight of others. And now from my watch till my sock, everything is made by others. So should I ask God to be injustful now? God is the God of the justice. So uh, we were a very short gathering, so I'll, I'll deliver something really important which, which is closest to my heart. So West is coming up. It was the decline of 1819 and starting of the 19th century that the West called for humanism. So humanism is a, is a uh, social science school which claims man to be the center of the universe for all things, not the God, not the theology, not the religion. And Dr. Lama Muhammad Iqbal was also living in that same age. So he wrote a series of verses that how I am the center of the being. This universe was not made for angels. I brought light to your universe. Though I am sinful, though I, I carry the Adam's apple of the first mistake, but I am the one who is running the universe. So Iqbal wrote verses and verses to bring back the man. But Iqbal said that the height of bringing humanism back dates back to 1400 years. Musa, Moses, for his whole life kept saying to God that I want to see you, though he was constantly talking with the God. He was in continuous conversation with the God, but he said, I want to see you. And this was the catch that God never wanted to show his majesty to the Moses because he was craving for something he was not meant to be. The art of being human is to stay as human being. The art of human being is, is to live with human being. And this is where Moses was going wrong. The Pharaoh was killing the people and Moses was asking to look at the God. And Akai do jahan sarkare do alam. When on the first sky, on the night of Miraj, the angel asked the Gabriel, on the first sky, is Muhammad coming with his own wish? So I was doing the Miraj transmission of PTV. So I thought in my heart and I laughed, Muhammad never wishes for anything. It's God's desire to see Muhammad. That is my prophet. This is Rasulullah. That when Allah asked Muhammad to come up and he waited for the time. And then just imagine what would happen, what Quran has to say. And I'm very sorry for few people who say that Rasulullah travel in Miraj in dream. <laughs> I guess uh, Abu Jahl was even not having an issue if he would have traveled. In. My daughter rather travel in dreams more than that. Why would someone have an issue if I'm dreaming about God? Muhammad Mustafa Sarkari Du Alam travel with his mundane moral mortal body to the highest skies, and then Quran quotes that there was a time when Rasulullah was at a distance of Kaaba Qasan. He was at a distance of nothing. Now 99.9% .9 of the scholars end up the 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 Miraj journey here. Like this was the biggest thing Rasulullah went up and met Allah. Now it takes a touch of a genius to be a Lama Muhammad Iqbal. And he said this famous verse, Sabak mila hai ye miraj Mustafa se mujhe ke aalame bashariyat ki zad mein hai gardu ilaj aatish rumi ke soz mein hai tera teri khirad pe hai ghalib farangiyo ka fasu. Iqbal said this, is, this was not miraj. Miraj was that Allah was in front of Rasulullah and Rasulullah said, I want to go down. That people of Makkah are still not fair, living a fair life. They're still killing their daughters. Allah, if you have seen me, I want to go down to the mankind. 
This was the Miraj Mustafa. This is what, what Iqbal calls, calls as the height of humanism. That when Allah came in front of Rasulullah, Rasulullah still chose and came down. And Peer of Gungo, Iqbal quoted in his book Reconstruction, chapter number three, first line. He quoted with Peer of Gungo. Peer of Gungo said that if I, Moses, Jesus, anyone would have went up there, they would have never come down. Because the ecstasy of being, what is God? The highest question. What is God? The highest ecstasy. What is God? The highest mirage of mankind. The sublimity. What we get through arts or music. If we get that directly. So that God is in front of Rasulullah and Rasulullah comes down. And this is not even the mirage Iqbal says. Rasulullah was standing in the next Fajr as he has never seen God. And he was still staying for the Fajr. He was still standing in the Fajr. He was still standing in the next Zohar, Asr, Maghrib, Nisha. This is honesty of Rasulullah with his Allah. This, he met Allah. So when there is no delta, there is no difference. So, I, so what is knowledge? Knowledge is the difference between the subject and the object. So this delta is the knowledge. So until the object is greater than the subject, we call it information. When the subject becomes greater than the object, it becomes knowledge. My, me, I take over the object. I, I explain. So now Rasulullah has met Allah. Yet till last day he's standing in the love of God. So the ummah may come and stand with the shoulder and shoulder in the love of the Lord. So this was, this was what our Rasulullah was. This was what our Rasulullah is rather. This is what Miraj is. That even you have met Allah, come to the people, come to the mankind. It's strange to ask that Rasulullah was prophet when in the age of 40. I mean, how could that be possible? He was a prophet when this universe was not made. There is a famous, I mean, we all were existing. Come to the Quran. We all were existing. What about Rasulullah then? Allah asked all of us when we were in the shape of souls. Alastu birabbikum kalu bala. And there is a very famous verse of Heer Varas Shah, Heer Akhya Kaziya Pachiya, Takko Takida Padna Nika Mera, Pehle Roz Me Lad Ishq De Lagi, Rab Bakshiya Kul Hisab Mera. I fell in love with the Lord on the day one. Now I can't fall in love with the world. And what about the Rasool Allah? Da Kae Do Jhaan Sada Sarkare Do Alam. So when Sarkare Do Alam was living his life. He was the chosen one. He was the prophet. So many people say he was Ummi. So few translate it as illiterate. Na'uzu billah, na'uzu billah, na'uzu billah, na'uzu billah min zalik. Minimum, alhamdulillah, I'm a PhD illiterate and I confess that. Very first, I usually ask them is how many schools were in Arab in those days, if you could give me the list, which were giving certificates that he's literate and is illiterate. By the way, Abu Jahal was so knowledgeable that by breaking the dunk of the camel, he could tell that the camel is of Makkah or Medina. And we call him Abu Jahal because he couldn't understand my Rasul, because he couldn't understand the Furqan. Furqan is Rasulullah call Quran as the Furqan. Certainly. But what if, what if a Jew reads Quran? <laughs> would he be able to differentiate? Come to the Prophet first. Abdullah bin Abai, the Raisul Munafiqeen used to recite Quran better than any Sahabi. But he was at a distance from heart from Rasulullah. So what so why Rasulullah was kept without teachers? What a greater mystery was lying. And certainly, honestly, if you ask me, I traveled times and times. I traveled earth. I've read Iqbal by sitting on one person's feet, honestly. And in those days, I would not know the meaning of word Khurshid. So there's a word sun, suraj, and then there's a word Khurshid. 
So I sat in that person's feet to understand Gabriel Wing, one of the finest books by Lama Muhammad Iqbal. So what happened? Muhammad and Mustafa was not taught by someone. Most importantly, not by a poet of that time, because poets were the most intelligent people of those days. And then he was called as Ummi. And what mystery was lying there, honestly? What mystery? And the people who have bows their rasul, sorry to say, they don't catch it. When I say something good, sir, if I make a good speak, unfortunately, what people say is that his elder brother is a very intelligent one. He has access to YouTube. He reads Professor Ahmed Rafi. Oh, he's very close to Ahmed Javed Sahab. Uh, oh, he reads a lot of books. So you take all of my knowledge and give half to my brother, few to Professor Saab, few to YouTube, and rest to someone else. And what is left with me? Nothing. Just my bones and my tongue. And Rasulullah was kept clean, 100%. No one touched, no one claimed to be his teacher. So when after the 40th year, he came down and said that, today I'm going to tell you and teach you a book. So no one could have claimed that it came through the rationality the brain and then they said from where you come where the book is coming from and Rasulullah said it's intuition it's wahi every great scholar has to write the defense of Quran that why Quran is not a book of brain why the why Quran is not made out of it I'm a student of literature I love literature so if you read Iliad by Homer if you read tragedies written by Shakespeare, if you read Sartre's Nausea, you would feel those great work of art are written by brain. They don't claim that they've been, they've been writing it through. Wahi. But Prophet Muhammad kept himself clean so the day he would say that, read everyone in the Arab, read. No one could claim that Muhammad has been taught by someone. Today, what's wrong with us? We're nearer to Quran and we're farther from Rasulullah. And my one of teacher Ahmed Javed Sahib said, Quran ko bagayr ustad ke padho zarar paida karega. What is ayas ayas? Are they not taking verses out of Quran? Read Quran under the umbrella of Rasulullah. When Aisha is asked, what is Quran? Am I wrong here? Tell me if I'm wrong here. When Aisha is asked, what is Quran? She said, Quran is nothing but Rasool Allah. Yasin is the heart of Quran. Go and read. Yasin is the name of Rasool Allah. He is the heart of Quran. Where are we heading? We are reciting verses and we don't even know what Rasool Allah was. We don't even know what Rasool Allah was. What Rasool Allah is and what Rasool Allah expects from us. There is a lady, and we've heard this trillion times, trillion times, and we've been telling this to our kids. There was a lady who used to put garbage on Rasulullah. Heard that, been there. Tell to your kids why Rasulullah was not changing the route. Because that would put that woman to the weight. This much heart my Rasulullah had for the poor people. After my Rasul won the Makkan war, he came back without the sword. By the way, I would miss something very important. Uh, could someone tell me how many manazare, how many did religious debates Rasulullah did in his life? Not even one. There is one item Mubala, one. Ayat Mubala, you bring your kids, I'll bring my Hassan Hussain. And they never went for it. So there is not even one debate by Rasulullah. Har har kundal kundal ute aashak da dil dole Husan tere di sift ki akha kafar kalma bole Rasulullah just, just walked through the street and the weak heartened infidels would recite Ashad wanna Muhammad and Abdu wa Rasulullah. He is the only prophet of this age. This was his debate. This was his debate. 
This was his way of preaching to the people. So after the Meccan war, when Raqai Do Jaha Sarkare Do Alam is coming back, there's a lady who's picking up some weight on her head and she's murmuring something in her mouth and saying, Oh, what Muhammad has done to this Arab, the blood is running in the street. And Rasulullah is smiling nearby and, that, and asked the lady, Please, can I carry your weight? And she said, Sure, take it. And then she said, You're so kind. And then there is one Muhammad in this Arab and he's just like creating blood all over the Arab. And he's still smiling. Sir, what would we have done if she would have said? We would have said, no, I'm the same one. Akai Dojahan never told her that I am the Muhammad you're talking about because that it would have given her a really bad feeling. Rasulullah went to her home, put down the weight and asked her that your home is not looking clean. Should I clean it? Rasulullah cleaned the home and she stood in the way and she said that, and I, that tell me your name. Even after three times, Rasulullah said, I'm not going to tell you my name. Because that would have troubled the lady. Save the heart of one man. It's better than the hurmat of Kaaba. And now tell me, what is the hurmat of Rasul? <laughs> better than the trillion universes existing. Keeping the heart of an infidel is better than keeping the hurmat of Kaaba. What about the hurmat e rasul we are treating on? And what is the worst hurmat we are we, we, not doing is that we are not loving him enough by our actions, by our speech, by our research, by our publications, by our inventions, by our discoveries, by our language, by our books. We should have outspoken this universe by now and sadly we couldn't. Sadly we couldn't. So that lady, so in Arab people say that uh, they give qasam, uh, they give like, what would we say to qasam? They, they, they give you a vow of your mother to tell me your name. And Rasulullah said, I am sorry, I am the same Muhammad you're asking about. He said sorry first. He is our Rasul. He was the one we've been sent about. And then Rasulullah once, uh, Peer Karam Sial Sharif, it's, it's a sad time for my young brother and me that we have to res read Rasulullah through the eyes of Karen Armstrong and Deepak Chopra, sadly. Peer Karam Sial Sharif wrote this big, Ziyaw Nabi. And who is Rasulullah? One of the men took the Rasulullah to the graveyard and said that I put my daughter in my first daughter in this grave, second in this grave, third in this grave, fourth in this grave, fifth in this grave, sixth in this grave, seventh in this grave. And Jaju, when he turned back for the eighth one, he saw that Rasulullah is crying like anything. This is Umar Each tear of each man belongs to Muhammad. Each smile hindered belongs to, should not belong to Muhammad. Each pain endured by mankind would be felt by Muhammad. This was the message. And then when he turned back after the ninth one and said, Rasulullah, would, would I be forgotten? Rasulullah hugged him and said, I would pray for you. Don't be disappointed. La taqla tumir rahmat Allah. Don't be disappointed with the rahmat of Allah. So my point today is that how could we read Quran without the person on whom it has been revealed? How could you... St it's, it's, it's a historical fact that you read the book through the author. You read the book through the author. If it's an autobiography, you ask, is it written by himself or someone else? And then we have to listen that 40 years Rasulullah was not Prophet, now Zubillah bin Saleh. 40 years 
he created the authority to be called as Sadiq or Amin. And now, before I end up, and let me create the biggest min misconception and because the way we ordinarily tell any modern scholar could challenge us and that's their right. Rasulullah was Sadiq because he didn't lie and Rasulullah was Amin because he was honest. So that means that bank is also Amin because no bank is dishonest. They keep our money and they give us back even they're stolen. And there are so many people in Pakistan who are actually very religious, I know, that would have never lied, but that never makes them sadiq. So I said honestly, went on a travel to know that how Rasulullah was sadiq or Amin. Mean, or what, do, what does it mean to be sadiq or Amin? And I was, I was amazed to know I was amazed to know. Rasulullah is walking. Rasulullah is walking. Rasulullah is walking and he calls Ali. Ali, I think the revelation is coming. The sound is coming. So Rasulullah sat down. Ali, right. Bismillah rahman rahim Inna atayna kal kawsar Fasallili rabbika wanhar Inna shaniya ka Ali stopped writing the Arabic. Now I would speak is no more Quran. That's a mean. Who could have told Rasulullah? Can anyone answer me in this whole wide world? Who would have Rasulullah? Who have told Rasulullah that Arabic you're speaking is 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 Sunnah and this one is Hadith and that is Quran? Who saw Gabriel in, in Arab? Can anyone tell me? Who saw Gabriel in Arab? We only saw Rasulullah. And it's strange to see that people give a transcending position to angels and not to the Prophet. And Alama Iqbal in his book Gabriel Wings, in his book Gabriel Wings said, Nakar Taklida Jibril Mere Jazbo Mastiki. Tan asa kutsiyon ko zikro tasbiyo tawafe ula. Oh, the lazy angels, what you have to do except of prayers? It's my prophet and his family who gave away the blood and toil for the words of Allah in the world. Now look at the height, how Iqbal translates this phenomena into the daily, into the daily discourse. At another place, Iqbal quotes that when Prophet goes down in the prayer and when the angel goes down, the prayer is not the same thing, can never be. Iqbal quotes in his magnum opus, the, one of the biggest poem ever written, Cordova Mosque. Iqbal says, Nuri ko sajda to kya? What if the angel goes down? This is where Muhammad, this is where Iqbal said, that Muhammad was even standing for prayer when the legs were trembling, hurting. And Iqbal then calls for the Gabriel that can you stand in one prayer after putting your mother in ICU in a hospital? This what exalts Muhammadans. This what exalts normal ummati, which Rasulullah said, the few people of my clan, of my ummat, would be having power equal to the prophets of, of Bani Israel. What was the reason that they would stand for prayers even their loved ones would be in hospitals? Have you ever thought what Rasulullah has taught us? 
We're worried about the money of fees and daily expenses and then we listen Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And then we go to God. And then we're standing in front of Him. That what exalts us above all. And Rasulullah have prepared us for that. What Rasulullah has taught us about. The whole namaz rotates around mankind. I so much loved when at the time of Juma, respected sir said that please stand closer to each other. I mean that's the time to show love. Call marks should have bowed down looking at the philosophy of Islam. What is more, what is higher, more higher of a communism than this that everyone stays equal? Anyone could come and offer the prayer standing with the king of the time? Muhammad has done that. Muhammad has done that. That a man from Habsha, whose tongue stutter, uttered the first azan. And today, they are telling us about the right of the Africans. Muhammad, come Bilal, it's your day. The mankind has won over the tyrants. The mankind has won, come Bilal, recite the name of the Lord. And the Bilal went up and he recited like anything. His tongue was stuttering. And Rasulullah said that, Lord is reading your heart. You love me and I love you back. And what is, what is Islam? Wa Allah, wa Rasul. I usually ask people, I, I, I think you're following a God of Zartusht. They were even a theology, they were even monotheist. If you don't love Rasulullah, if you don't follow Rasulullah, I what king when, 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 when the Salauddin Ayubi's daughter was caught, she called for it, it, was, it was an honor in Muslims to call as O oh, the Allah of Muhammad, the Allah or the God as told, explained, and manifested by Rasulullah. What? What is my knowledge now, Zubillah bin Zayd? This brain I should trust. Or if someone has read the post-rationalist literature, the very first thing which loses its, or leaves my, my support when I grow old or when I'm in fear, when I'm in sleeping, it's brain. How long it could have been trusted? How long I could have trusted it to, to find a way out in a very ephemeral short life? So it's my humble request to everyone that if you ever read Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen again and when you're going through that verse Sarat al Anamta Alayhim please give a wake up call and find those people. Yeah, <laughs> every prayer we say Oh God shows the path of those people, men, those teachers who would show us who you are? How could I know? I don't even know myself. The greatest of the question. Manarafa nafsu fakadarafa rabbuhu. If you know yourself, you know the Lord Allah's Rasulullah said. If you know yourself, you know the Allah. Because I don't know myself. How could I know the Lord? So why? If you don't know the Lord, one of the people said, if you don't know the Lord, minimum know someone who knows the Lord. Find that man. And religions, and time and time people have those people around. So we should seek refuge of Allah from shaitan. We should, whenever we go down, we should request Allah to give us the hazuri of Rasulullah in the prayers, in the dreams. Makkah has been hosting religious even since or before Islam. So obviously it's very religious place. It's I mean how to debate about it. It's obvious. So I pray that we all 
should have didar e madina the site of madina before we pass away to see the shrine of the lord who showed us to the to the light who gave us a religion which was scientific which was moral which was curious which was which 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 had which was so open for questions so before i before i end up my 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 chat i would say it's not a talk or a lecture now you belong to junior for that so i've been in literature a lot so there is a there is a person shikov is a russian writer very famous one so he's been writing a lot about philosophy and life so when he was dying his wife asked shikov can you tell me what is life what a reply shikov gave he said it's like asking a carrot what is a carrot a carrot is a carrot and i know nothing but when the same question is asked to rasul allah when he is about to pass away rasul allah any last words do you know what he said when i wrote in one of my research papers uh, is religion the opium of masses a review of marxist claim through quran when rasul allah you know what rasul allah's last words were please take care of the old ones the zaif and the ladies of my ummah this is why alhamdulillah we are cursed we didn't because we're so close to quran and we're not so close to the last words said by the holiest men ever walked this face of earth please take care rasul allah said of the old ones and the women of my ummah they'll be needing me more than ever and when i'll be going away it's you as my as my soldiers please take care of them and at at numerous ahadith rasulullah said remember when people get old they get weak and woman is weak so taus billah we don't say woman is weak by body so woman is really really mastered in ai in emotional intelligence so this is where rasulullah said do extra, take care extra of them so this is why rasulullah never gave the right of divorce to them because they could have fluked it like just like that nauzu billah so but rather i should even clarify one of the points here once mola ali was asked hazrat ali rizwana no was asked who is man and who is woman so he asked are you asking about genders <laughs> you don't qualify to be a man by just carrying a body you need to prove it you need to prove it through action you're a man how could i know or else just recite the kalma in the ear and the person should be entering the heaven and rasulullah said no don't take that privilege you need to make this universe more productive before you leave to enter in the jannat you need to make this universe more moral before you leave so with that i would thank warsi sir thank you so much for inviting me uh thank you so much sir having such senior fellows having such amazing people specifically when someone's having a beard so it, oh, it's it's a big day for me if i'm talking to him because I, I, honestly i'm not that spiritually advanced maybe but it is indeed a great honor uh when someone's listening to you so i would be ending up uh, with the words of baba bulle shah when bulle shah is is a sufi poet from punjab no so for the people who are not known to them i'm really sorry so when bulle shah started to have the beard so someone said that why are you keeping the beard what an epic reply so now we realize why he wrote this poetry and he said that ranja ranja kar di ni main aap hi ranja hoye कोशिश करो कि अपना रंग ऐसा रखो कि निगाह तुम पे पड़े और दिखे कोई और दिस वॉज बुल्ले शाह ट्राइंग टू से 
when I, I I'm not that minimum, I confess. This guy's minimum dagger, when I look at him, I am reminded of him. This is the philosophy of beard. But this should not stop at beard. My morality should be reminded of Rasulullah. People should call us. Look, it is, it is impossible. One of the research papers I read, beard used to make transactions faster in medieval ages. They were of Rasulullah's clan. They would not deceive. And now, it's, it's, it's too odd to say what's, what's the condition now. So I guess it's, we're heading for the Isha time, but So I've got, I'm getting so many verses, but let's recite something, something really Punjabi for, in the love of us. So not could be said in any language. So, so this was also nice that Ranja Ranja Kardini me ape Ranja hoi sado ni menu dido Ranja hirna ko koi. Don't call me with my name. Call me me with the name of my beloved. Ranja me which me Ranja which ghair khayal na koi. Te me nahi ho ape apni ap kare dil joi. Now what Rumi said, like if someone would say that I spoke well or I spoke bad, let's say. So Rumi said that Ranja, the Bulisha said, Ranja Mevich, Meh Ranjevich. I am in my loved one and my loved one is within me. So it's not me who is speaking, it's him. And this is why Rumi said that. Does the air belongs to the fruit? Such giants we have in our legacy and we're not following. Does the A belongs to the flute? How could I say a single word without his permission? Ranja mein vich mein ranje vich ghair khayal na koi te mein nahi ho aap pe apni aap kare dil joi. It must have been permission of Rasulullah that we should have remember him here. Te mein nahi ho aap pe apni aap kare dil joi te jeda saade andar vasse zaat asandi ho. My caste belongs to the one who lives in my heart. The rest I've disowned. So one of the, so let's get one thing from Hir Warashi and then I'll be saying Allah Hafiz. Manatkiya be parwa de naal. Is deen duni de shah de naal. Kazi mulla mati dende khare siyane ra dasende. O ishki lagge rama naal. ते नदियों पार सजण दा टाणा कीता कॉल जरूरी जाना ते मिनता करा मल्ला दे नाल ही सेड दैट आई एम ओनली थैंकफुल टू द एंजल ऑफ डेथ बिकॉज़ ही वुड ड्रोव मी टू माय प्रॉफिट सो आई एम वेटिंग फॉर हिम विद द लास्ट वर्स फ्रॉम मौलाना जलालुद्दीन रूमी इट्स वन ऑफ द फाइनेस्ट पर्शियन वर्स Yaade u sarmaya ima babad. Do you know what is my faith? Rumi said. My faith is that I can remember Muhammad. That's my faith. My faith is not reciting kalma from the tongue, which anyone can. I think Alhamdulillah, we all are doing it since minimum. I'm doing it since thirty. Yaade u sarmaya ima babad. Az yaade u har gada sulta babad. Even if the beggar remembers he, him, he becomes the king of the age in that second. And people have been doing it before Rasulullah when uh, the barrel philosopher was sitting in the barrel, the Diogene, the barrel philosopher, and Alexander said that, what do you need? And he said, I need nothing, just move off. So once you're in the ecstasy, and we, we Muslims have a greater ecstasy of that thing, So now, very scientific thing I would love to say that this universe is, is very mechanical. So we really, we should learn it by heart. So the others should not say that we do not know about it. That would be a very lame excuse from our side. It is mandatory for us. I've been working on Quran and I found words from psychology, metaphysics, morality, law, physics, chemistry, biology, 
evolution. Now, with what privilege I miss these subjects in normal life, calling myself a Muslim. With what privilege? I, 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 I was telling to Varshi Saab, in Torah, in the Bible, in the Psalms, there is not a verse to leave this universe. There is only verse in Quran, Akhtaru Samavati will use power and leave the universe. And look at, and the NASA was made by the Americans, not by the Muslims. And it, have we not read that verse? The Allah is forcing us to leave the universe. Explore it, it's just made for you, enjoy it, man. Radar Ghalib then said, Hai kaha tamanna ka dusra kadam ya Rab, humne dashtem ka quick nakshe paap aya. The God, your universe is, is quite squeezed when I look it through my imagination and quite longer when I look it through my rationality. So with the prayers that Rasulullah may make us more curious, with the prayers that Rasulullah may when I met my Murshid, the mentor, the only thing I was worrying about was that would he remember me the next time? And respected said honestly, I was ashamed when I put myself in the same question in context of Rasulullah. Just, just the last words. What, I mean, what pride or what gumand or what gharoor or what, what guarantee do we have that in the last day would be, or what extraordinary thing, what, what invention or discovery we would have done that we are so sure that we would be standing there, Rasulullah would say, oh, there is Quran. Or what is the guarantee that I have not disappointed Rasulullah and he might not look at me that day? Who would save us from the wrath of the God, the man or the man's body or man's consciousness which cannot bear the sun or we cannot even look at the sun and we're talking about facing the God without the veil of Rasulullah, without the kamli of Rasulullah, without the chadar of Rasulullah. So even we have not found God, let's find Rasulullah minimum. And how can we find God without Rasulullah? If you try to f hundred times find without, fa it's my open challenge. There are people who have found God without Rasulullah and trust me, you would find them so much in ego. And one Hazrat Umar Razi Talano sat on a very beautiful horse and came down and he said, what happened Umar? He said, I just felt a bit of an ego and Rasulullah said that even my newt of an ego is in your heart. So I wish that, I wish and I pray that Rasulullah remembers us on the last day. He may make us more curious. He may he may visit us in our dreams. Supne vich menu mahi milayate me gal vich palaya bawa te dardi mari akna khola kite fir bichar na jawa. I wish to find Rasulullah soon. I wish I wish to make this world a better symbol from the hands of Muslims. So it's easier for other nations and people to believe the Muslims are creative, moral inspirative and certainly the amazing human beings wa akhiru dawana an alhamdulillah rabbil alamin any questions dr donier Beautiful question. Beautiful question. Now that's a question. So I started my journey with why Buddha is not my prophet. This question was asked by Have you read of Dr. Ali Shariati? He's a very amazing scholar from Iran. He wrote an amazing poem Why Buddha is not my prophet. What wrong thing Buddha said? Can anyone quote? Any one thing, any one thing. 
He asks to rape people? Nope. He asks for usury? Nope. He asks to disrespect mankind? Not at all. So Ali Shariati said that I started walking towards Egypt. And I said, no, Buddha is not my prophet because because when the Pharaoh was killing people in Egypt, Buddha was finding his personal nirvana in the jungle. And he said, then Zarthush should be my prophet. The, the Zarathus from the Iran, the Zoroastrian, the, the who believe in the fire god. And certainly they're monotheists, they, they believe in one god, Ahura Mazda. They believe in seven angels, Amashta, Senu Amashta. I don't remember the second one. Bad day when you're on paracetamol. So he said, why Zarathustra is not my, Zarathustra is not my prophet? He traveled actually. And he said he's not my prophet because he became a vizier. Prince of Balkh. <laughs> How could a prophet be a vizier to someone who's, who, who's a tyrant? A minister. He said that then someone recited me a verse of Quran that we will make the weak people the leaders of the nation. And I've used that verse again in my recent paper and when I wrote about the communism. When, when Karl Marx said religion is the opium of masses, he said, I went to Makkah to see the house of that man who's been claiming to be the next prophet. And I said, I've heard the name. The name is Muhammad. He said, when I went to his home, the, the wall of his home was still having the scent of his sweat and toil. And people told me that he was stitching his own shoes. People told me he was respecting his wife like anything. People told me he, in those days of Arab, he was finding the earring of his wife in the street. In those days of Arab, in those days of Arab when there was no authority, he was not mixing his personal choice in the Quran. Not even once. His personal choice in Quran. And then he said that I offered myself to him. There were seven souls in his room, but none was used. What he spoke, he only spoke the truth. He made people look at the sky again. When the wealth was asking them to look down on the shops, he was asking them to look up and find him. He talked about the God who was not present. Imagine what could be the highest curiosity than believing in absent which is absolutely present. What curiosity is that? So, I'm not saying with certainly with certainty, rather that would reflect my illiteracy, honestly. That would prove my my, 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 my being uneducated. But I'm, I'm the one who's walking on a path and so far I'm not only confident, but I'm also having experiences which are psychologically fit, good. And I'm having a raised perception to see that certainly Islam is the solution rather than a religion. It's the solution. Because number one, because it encompasses the other two major religions which are already in practice, the religion of, of Moses and Jesus, specifically coming from the roots of Abraham. So we already cover the huge lot which is already out there. There's a famous book by Morris Bukal by, which talks about Torah, Bible, and Quran. So it has been clearly stating that both the religions were already predicting about an coming prophet to keep the hopefulness alive. And when Rasulullah came, he gave himself the khatim, and he also predicted about the last Mahdi. 
and he freed mankind from further profits. He gave the psychological uplift of the mankind to stand up, root yourself with the faith, and now unveil the universe. Stop waiting for others. Where Iqbal says, Muhammad has completed the prophethood. Now I've, I'm, I'm all on fire, said Iqbal. Because it's all up on me now. So, the finality of prophet unveiled man's fire to, to work with a better pace in the universe, to be more moral, and, and certainly to believe in, in something which is absent, so we may transcend towards infinity with a quicker pace. So we will not be left behind. What is, I guess here a doctor you would be, what is existentialism? And how it's taking over mankind. Like the matter is taking over us. We're becoming a byproduct. So even if the, a God was something visible or tangible, it would have also been a curse of existentialism today or tomorrow. Not a bad thought. So I don't think believe in debating and changing people's faith but I believe that we Muslims should have manifested what we wanted people to believe well, my mentor Ahmed Javed Saab in Pakistan said that for all religions that atheism in itself is a very newer thought like morality is a very old thought metaphysics is a very old thought physics is a very old thought atheism is a very new thought emerging due to non-productiveness of religions. Religions became unproductive. It, someone had to fill the gap. There was a time religion was the authority on science. Newton, was he not a religious man? Religion, Newton used to find the, the tomb of Solomon. He was making the maps. Now they would even call him a lunatic. Einstein said that I don't want to enter into a laboratory which is not, which is not having a God in it. It's, it's visible. I'm not talking any pseudo theory. So there has been time when religious people have been guiding the world. But now, in a, in a certain last hundred years, uh, I would love to add you one thing because you're really, I feel, an educated guy. Sir, I could be wrong and I'll be very sorry. I'll, I don't want to go into debate, but do assess that thing. Capitalism doesn't like any religion. Capitalism doesn't like cynic, cynics from the Greeks. The cynics, capitalism never supported Gotham's uh, theory. Capitalism never supported even, even the Hindus who would say that don't buy the moon. How could they have supported Islam as the largest religious growing school, which clearly said al hakam al taqasir don't create the wealth for God's sake, it's not going to help you. So the merger of capitalism with the sciences has given birth to so many philosophies, which are only artificial questions, just to make the religious schools weak, just to make religious schools weak. Look, What do we say to Kanat? Hmm? No, 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 to buy less. Like religion, if, if I, if, just a thing. Once I was asked in Pakistan, is music halal or haram in Islam? So I said that, why should I answer? And Imam Ghazali has answered in Hayal Ulum. There's a book, Dancing and Singing in Islam, written by Imam Ghazali. He's a very strict teacher, by the way. So I said, why should I answer when Imam Ghazali has answered it? So he said that, no, no, you tell me, would prophet prefer music? I said, why do you prefer, why do you listen to music? And he said, I listen to music so I should get ecstasy. And I said, imagine who is ecstasy, his own self. Why would he need that guy? Don't we laugh on our kids when they are troubled by little troubles? If Vahir Saab's son is worried about 20 pounds loss, he would say, yeah, go on, yeah, I'll get you. And he would be sweating and dying in it. Or if your patient is worried about a little, like, 
cut or something, you say, come on, yeah, I'll get it done. Stop telling me about it. So recently, when I look at capitalism, it is not in favor of religion. So I see so many questions now standing up, which are nothing but artificial questions. Honestly, they're artificial questions. Artificial questions. I mean, they, they don't root in a real pragmatic issue. I address them, it would not help the world. I don't address them, it will not help them. But you're very right. Uh, till the last day, we should stay thirsty. We should stay curious. We should have, we should have lust for Allah. And we should, we should manifest what we want to believe, what others should want to believe. So I'm very less into preaching. I'm very less into it. What I want, to be, what I want others to be, I should become. That's, that's the simplest way. If we believe that Muslims are great thinkers, let's prove it to the world by making the best uh, research centers. They would never ask the question. Though I'm all, I'm not giving the right answers, but if you have so. <laughs> oh, so what an honor for me that you came. I have a verse for Professor Saab. Let me yeah. read it. Thank you very much. Uh, Professor, there is, uh, Dr. Saab, there is there's a verse I want to read. Uh, I don't want to miss it. I don't want to mispronounce it either. No, no, I have that. Yeah, I do have Why Quran came? Why Quran has been revealed? So, our teacher says that if Quran will not tell why I'm revealed, obviously everyone in the street will tell them and what's happening. So, Quran says, chapter 38, verse 29, this is a blessed book which we have revealed to you so they might reflect upon its verses and those who understand would uh, would do the progress in it so the the word we use are liyadabbaru they would ponder this book has been revealed only for two reasons only two for pondering and ulil bab who are the thinkers they may do the extra zikr of it that's it it's a book by which you could decode this universe honestly Dr. Sab, I was reading Stephen Hawking's latest book. Uh, this is just normal chat now. Just imagine we've ended the chat. Uh, Theory of Everything. And I'm, I'm a big Hawking fan. And Hawking said that... I don't even know he had a brain or he was attached to a simple computer. He's amazing. He said, what is an arrow of time? Why the time is coming from past to present? What is the worth? I mean, how much would be the worth of this question, sir? My honest, is a trillion dollar question. Why the time is moving from birth to death or from infant to adolescent and adolescent to being full adult and adult to old? Why we take birth first and when? Why the time has particular arrow from yesterday to today? <coughs> and he gave one theory. His book is 
it's not his movie. It, he also wrote a separate book theory of everything. Chapter 7 is time. And first part is arrow of time. What an answer Dr. Sabi said. He said that time runs on law of entropy. The time puts his arrow from order to disorder. So the time would be running from the day of order to the state of disorders. We decay every day. We get old every day. Things break up. The universe is decaying in every single because the era has to, is losing energies. Wow. And imagine, respected sir, you're not going to believe I'm the only stupid scholar, me minimum. Sir, I ran to Quran. I asked my wife, bring Quran quickly. Voila, sir. And Professor Ahmed Rafiq Saab has been crying that Khusar is not Khasara, it is entropy. And then when I made them two go together, I realized where I time. The right meaning is study time. We all are heading more towards the disorder. And what's the solution? Because when, even when I'm cutting my birthday cake, I'm getting old. Even when I'm happier, I'm getting old. I'm heading towards my grave. The only solution is hold to faith. Okay, you don't believe the religious thinkers. This is the solution given by Kirki God. He said the only solution to existentialism is hug the faith. That's it. What's the other way out? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, the Kirki God who wrote either slash or. So he was the one who predicted it so late and Rasulullah said it so early. Go and hug out a faith. What else the life is then? If someone tells me that life is life is meaningless and then then provide the meaning and sir kirki god what a, what a wonderful thing alam iqbal one of the man who was the founder of pakistan had a great love for kirki god with a very famous book by ghulam sabir kirki god and iqbal and kirki god said that height of human height of human brain's achievement is to lust for god that's the height. And that height has actually been achieved when we qualify by saying La ilaha illa Muhammad Rasulullah. So in my one of the lectures in Lahore, I said that when La, well, La ilaha illa Muhammad Rasulullah, when the azan, Allah Akbar has been recited in my ear, I couldn't, I can't change the universe enough because I'm too tiny and I'm crying and the pampers are on. But minimum, I, when I'm grown up, I should have the courage to say these words like anything that I could shake the world. Sadly, I couldn't even do that. Do you know what authority Allah Mia has given to every single human being? Until, last words, until single human being is reciting my kalma, Israfil cannot end up this world. This is the power of Muslim. Mashallah, Mashallah, very good, very enlightened and uh, deep and impressive. Mashallah, Mashallah, may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala grant more knowledge, Inshallah, more courage, more knowledge, health. Very happy to see this young man. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin, Wa Alamin Taqim. Wa Salatu Wa Salam Ala Rasulullah Sayyid Muslim. Allah Rabbana Atina Fi Dunya Hasana Wa Fil Akhirati Hasana Tam Waqina Tam Nar. हमारे वासी साहब को ये लगातार इसका अजरता फरमाया जो मेरे खास तौर पर बड़ी मोहब्बत के साथ इनको दावत दी और हमें मौका मिला ऐसे बहुत कम मौके मिलते हैं ऐसे लोग जो हैं इनको सुनने का अल्लाह तबारक तौर इनके इल्म में इजाफा फरमाए और खैर वाफियत फरमाए डॉक्टर साहब थैंक यू